Hello Slicey Dicers, this is Brian with a first impressions knife review for you. This is the Spyderco Capara. I honestly was not planning on reviewing this today, but I got it out of the box and I liked it so much earlier this morning. I've been carrying it around, playing with it all day, and uh, I really like it. And I thought maybe I'd want to get that out there for you guys because it's uh, this is the day before Thanksgiving 2018. So Black Friday's coming up, everything you spending a lot of money. You might want to spend some money on this, so I wanted to get a little review out here. And if you're going to go buy it, you can go buy it at White Mountain Knives. They have them in stock. A lot of places don't have them in stock. And you get a 10% discount code just by using SDWMK at your checkout. Just put that in a little discount code thing. 10% off. And 10% off this knife is not an insignificant amount of money because this is $188.50. So you're getting 10% off of that. So nearly 20 bucks off. So... Go use that code. Go check it out. This knife is something that uh, was not really on my radar, I have to say, for uh, Spider Co's. That this is, I'm really surprised with this, uh, how much I do like it. Again, having it for a day, this is just a first impressions video. But, um, man, it's pretty great. Uh, I, I was looking more at the the their new offerings for this year, like the Amalgam and the Mantra 3 and the smock uh the smock i don't know when the hell that's coming out so that's kind of falling off my radar when it shows up it shows up the amalgam i kind of got the impression for some other reviews because some people got some pre-release ones that uh, it's just it's probably just going to be too big for me and i canceled my pre-order on that as i did the, the mantra 3 i saw in reviews there's lots of things i don't like about the mantra 3 i think i'm just going to skip that one entirely um if somebody wants to pass an amalgam or a smock through or an amalgam or a uh, Man mantra 3 through my my hands i'll review it but i, I i'm not gonna go buy one so i got this because i saw dr frunky who i very much appreciate and very much respect his opinions on stuff and we have very similar tastes i he loves this knife a lot um i don't know if i love it as much as he does but i i i thought well you know I'm just going to give it a shot, and I'm glad I did. This is uh, definitely my favorite Spyderco I've handled this year, and after one day, again, first impressions, but it's uh, it's pretty darn great. And they said 18850 not cheap. It is from the Taichung uh, factory, which is one of their better factories, or their best factory, I guess I should say. S30V steel, really nice contoured carbon fiber handles wire pocket clip they should use this on so many more things than they do uh really nice action i like the red g10 backspacer because there's a reason for it i'm not always a fan of uh of color accent backspacers but this is a design by alistair phillips from australia alistair phillips from australia how cool a name is that that's awesome but it's named after a red back spider so they put the little bit of red on there Kind of cool. I don't I don't mind a colored spacer when there's an explanation for it. And uh, just a really kind of... Uh, I'm. What's the word I want to say? I almost want to say quirky. It's very attractive, but it's kind of a very curvy, quirky design. Uh, I, I do really like the design of it. It's I don't think pictures do it justice. In person, it looks a lot better. Uh, let's do some size comparisons and uh, stats and stuff before we move on too far. First up, we'll put it against your P Spyderco PM2. You can see it's just a little bit longer than a PM2, but a much more slender knife for sure. Put it up against your uh, Benchmade 940. This kind of reminds me in a lot of ways of the 940, but it's a bit longer, obviously. But just in that, it's that kind of slimmer but still fairly longer blade. Uh, your Ontario Rat Model 1. A little bit shorter than a Model 1. And lastly, we're in another Spider Co. because this is one that you're going to see a comparison review between these two. As soon as I got this out of the box and put it in my hand, it reminded me in a kind of complicated way of the Gail Bradley 2 from Spider Co. It's... They're both spider Spydercos that, you can see they're fairly similar in length, very similar in price, and uh, they're both knives that I didn't know I wanted so much until I got one in my hand. If you guys go back and watch my GB2 video, 
Uh, this is a knife I love. Uh, was never interested in it until I put my hands on it, and now I love it. And the Kapar is kind of the same way. I didn't know how much I would like it until I got my hands on it. Let's do some stats. Uh, we have an overall length of eight and a quarter inches, blade length of 3.6 inches. We have a blade thickness of 0.11 inches, handle thickness of 0.5 inches, and a weight of 3.39 ounces, according to my scales. Uh, all very good EDC size stats. Blades, uh, blades a little long if you're in that three and a half inch, you know, limit legality wise, maybe an issue for you. But other than that, you know, it's a it's a perfect little EDC size knife. Uh, but it is not technically designed for EDC. It was technically designed for food prep, but uh, and there's some concessions to that we'll get to in a moment. But he wound up, uh, Alice, old Alastia Phillips wound up making a, a great EDC knife. It is a really, really nice knife. This blade, I love this blade. It's so good. I did actually, I got this early this morning. I had to go out in the garage and uh, cut up a bunch of bike boxes that needed to go away and make one very large bike box into a slightly smaller bike box. And man, this thing hacks through cardboard like nobody's business great edge right out of the box uh i have not touched it since i did that um still super super sharp uh it is about 18 thousandths behind the edge which is pretty pretty thin behind the edge for a spider co as i said 0 0.11 inch uh, blade thickness so it's a pretty damn good little slicer and the tip is not that let's compare it to like the uh, where did i put it to the pm2 you can see You've got a tip that's just a bit more robust than the PM2 is, which is kind of nice. I mean, it's not not a pry bar, but a bit more robust than that. Uh, it is it is uh, S30V. A lot of people are going to complain about that for 190 bucks for S30V, but I don't I don't have a problem with S30V. I know people complain about chipping and all that stuff. I've never really had that much of a problem, especially not with spider codes. I've never had any issues like that at all. So. Um, I'm not. I'm not upset about the the blade steel at all. Uh, it is a Tai Chung, so I would say that the likelihood of sprint runs in other steels is fairly slim. It, it just seems like the Tai Chung ones they don't do that very often. Uh, but I'm happy with what it came with, or what it you know what it comes with out of the box. Um, ergonomically, it is outstanding. Uh, just the handles are contoured well, no matter where you grip it. It's excellent. Here in this like you know your normal position saber grip don't really feel that wire pocket clip and what's nice about the wire pocket clip one of the many reasons why i love it is if you do feel it and you squeeze hard enough it does it does kind of push out of the way so it's fine you can choke up which is really nice there is no jimping that is the thing i was going to say they made a concession about food prep uh the designer said specifically he didn't want to get food gunk in it so that's why that's uh why it's not there i i do kind of wish it had a little bit right there just just a little um it's it's not the end of the world i do like that you can use it for draw cuts though it works excellently for that as i said cutting up boxes and opening boxes and all that kind of stuff it works great for that uh, it is a tight chunk so the uh, one thing you'll notice ergonomically is that the uh, the edges aren't as sharp as some other tight chunks that i've gotten but still they're not they're not chamfered as much you know, is like on the on the PM2. You can definitely feel there's a bit more edge there. Not much. It, it's it's definitely better. Uh, it's not enough to call it a you know drawback or anything, but but I'm gonna mention it anyway. Uh, the spidey hole, especially around here, is still still just a little sharp, a little sharp, not too bad. Um, but yeah, ergonomically super comfortable. Uh, carry wise, this thing carries excellently. As you can see, it's not that tall. It's a, uh, what, inch, inch and a half at its tallest point. But it's got that nice deep carry clip in it. And it's uh, the way the clip is angled, and there's nothing to sharp to grab here. And 3.4 ounces for a knife this size, this much blade, not bad at all. I think it carries pretty darn good. Um, I'm happy with it. It's one of my favorite things about it, I think, is sliding it in and out of the pocket and stuff. It's great. And again, with this carbon, you're not getting... Um, you know, it's not going to catch on anything. It's not going to be a pocket destroyer. 
uh, action wise I did have to back off the pivot uh, like a quarter turn when I first got it but uh, once I did just like a PM2 or anything like that and that's really good for a for a Tai Chung uh, compression lock a lot of times the Tai Chung compression locks aren't quite the same I have not taken this apart or anything yet. I will do that before I do like a long-term review on this in a couple of months. But um, uh, as as Dr. Frunky suggested, I believe he's correct. I think those bushings look like they might be bigger than is on like a PM2 or something like that. They definitely look bigger. This is another Taichung compression lock. Yeah, you can't see down there at all because it's all gunked up because there's a Sage 5 that I carry all the time. But yeah, I think those might be a bit bigger bushings. I might be wrong, but yeah. Those run on bronze bushings, but action is great. Centering's great. All that stuff. It's very easy to spidey flick when you don't have a, a tripod in your way. There we go. Um, it. I'm very, very, very pleased with this. Ed, this is a great knife. I am gonna give it the on-camera applause break uh yeah that's i'm so glad i got this uh i think i would have been disappointed if i would have waited and got the amalgam the amalgam just looks too big for me i'm not sure i, I would i'm gonna like that uh that's the amalgams on the maybe list still but uh i'm glad i went for this instead awesome 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 job from spider co um yeah i don't know what else to say about it again this is just first impressions. I'm going to keep it around for a month or two, and then I'll, I'll do another longer-term review on it. But there definitely will, in the meantime, I will definitely be comparing it to the Gail Bradley 2 because uh, they, they do remind me of each other a whole lot. Both designed for very specific purposes. Both, uh, both ones I didn't know I needed until I had them. Yeah, I think that'll be a fun little review. So, again, this was an unplanned video, but hope you guys have enjoyed it. I've been Brian. Have a good one.